Welcome to Crosslight's 3D TCAD tutorial on Superjunction LDMOS. In the design of power devices, high breakdown voltage usually contradicts with low conduction voltage. The superjunction structure design uses the balance and compensation between P and N types of doping to relieve the contradiction. The superjunction structure introduces an electrical field vertical to the channel. Without affecting the breakdown voltage, it can use higher doping. The vertical field reduces the field variation along the channel, while it increases the total voltage drop, or the breakdown voltage. Therefore, at the same breakdown voltage as conventional LDMOS, a lower turn-on resistance and higher switching speed can be achieved. The superjunction design may help achieve a higher breakdown voltage for a smaller source drain distance, as well as a higher current at a smaller area. This is the distribution of net doping for a superjunction LDMOS. The light blue part is the P-type substrate. The orange color part is the N-type drift region. The sky blue part is the P-drift region. And this part is the P-well. The top red part is the gate. The left side red part is the drain. And the right side red part is the source. The dark blue part is heavily p-doped to prevent the onset of latch up. This tutorial uses Crosslight's Nova TCAD to demonstrate the process and device simulation of a superjunction LDMOS. All right, let's take a look at the design masks. First, we're going to open up the graphic file of mask. We're going to use six layers of masks for this demo. To speed up the tutorial, we're going to use mask data previously generated and we'll just explain it here briefly. We would start from a boron doped substrate. The first layer is labeled mask 5 as indicated here. Before using this mask, we would epigrow an N type silicone and etch to form the N type region of the superjunction. The right hand side table displays the 1 micron depth of the etching. The remaining part after the etching would be used to conduct electricity. We can see the doping profile after this process step, which is the dark red part over here. The second layer is mask 6, which is used to form the p-type region of the superjunction. Processing parameter is also displayed on the right hand side table here. We would deposit a P type silicone with the same doping concentration as the previous N type. Then we would etch and using this mask layer and form the P type region of the superjunction. Ideally, the N and P type region should be on a plane, and thus electrical field vertical to the channel would be introduced. This is what the P-drift region looked like after this step. The third layer is labeled mask 7, which is used to implant boron to form the P-well after diffusion. The corresponding P-well region is indicated over here. Now we're ready to form the gate. The fourth layer is labeled mask 2, which is used to form the gate electrode. Before using this mask layer, we need to form the gate oxide, then we deposit a layer of poly. Finally, we use the mask to etch and form the gate, which is indicated by the red piece over here. The fifth layer is labeled mask 4, which is used to implant phosphorus and arsenic. It helps to form the source and drain electrodes after diffusion. The corresponding parts are the deep red source here and the deep red drain here. The final mask layer is labeled mask 3 and it is used to implant boron. After diffusion, the heavily p-doped 
dark blue stripe is formed here. It's in place to prevent the onset of latch up. Now I'll demonstrate how to set up the mesh. First we need to enable all of the layers. Then we click on basic mesh. This will set the grid lines for each mesh plane. If the mesh is not uniform, we need to define how the grid, grid spacing varies. Also, we need to set the substrate material and thickness. Then we hit apply. Now we need to set the grid in the Z direction. Since doping variation in the Z direction is rather strong, we need to add some cuts. The Z direction is indicated by the vertical axis on the mask editor. To add Z planes, we click Add Cut Planes and double click to add. To speed up the demo, we use values previously added and we hit 3D Save and Cut. This is how the final Z plane looks like from the top. The 3D Save and Cut button will also generate and save many files needed for 3D TCAD simulation. The main input file is named temp.in. We're going to rename temp.in into another name and we're going to add more detailed process steps not yet included by the major structural masks. Let's take a quick look at the final process input file. Most of the lines were generated automatically by mask editor. After running the process simulation, we need to set the contact boundary for electrical simulation. We can do this by pressing the contact button. For the demo, the number 1, 2, and 3 here corresponds to the source, gate, and drain in the device. Let's hit save and generate and exit. Next we're going to use Apsys to perform electrical simulation. Let's just wait for it to open. Okay. When simulating breakdown voltage we need to set the impact ionization model. We have to check the material index from the file named contact3d.sol. We found the material inde index of silicone to be material number 4, which we use in setting the impact ionization model. We're going to scan the voltage to 300 to make sure breakdown will occur. To calculate on-state resistance, we bias the gate to 5 volts before we can scan the drain to 10 volts. Finally, we run two input files, bv.sol and ron.sol, for breakdown and on-state resistance, respectively. We will check the results next. Here's the device structure. This one's the doping distribution. And this one shows the electrical field. This plot shows the location of high field is around the PN junction interface. This high vertical field reduces the field along the channel. This one is the potential distribution. This one shows the on-state field distribution. This plot shows the on-state current distribution. A 
and here is the potential distribution at on state. We would set up a similar LDMOS without superjunction for the purpose of comparison. We would adjust the doping so that the breakdown voltage of the conventional LDMOS is about the same as that of the superjunction LDMOS discussed previously. To make the comparison meaningful, we use the same mesh for both cases. We plot the BV curve and save it. We also plot the on state IV curve and save the data. We would compare the BV and VCE curves of the two devices. We would name the BV data file of the conventional LDMOS to be nvno.dat. We find that its BV is smaller than what it is from its superjunction counterpart. Here is a comparison of the on state resistances. The conventional device is represented by yellow. We find that the on state resistance of the conventional device is usually larger than its superjunction counterpart. Therefore, after comparing BV and RON curves, we demonstrate the advantage of superjunction design. Thank you for your time. We hope to see you in another one of our tutorials.